everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Just Get Hired podcast. I'm your host, Jessica Fiesta George. This is a podcast where we dish out the hottest tips and trends in the workplace today. And we're going to dive into the world of transportation staffing with a fantastic guest who I'm excited for you guys to meet. She's all about bridging the gap between generations and making workplaces thrive. She's a wakeboarding champion a published author of multiple books, and a Gen Z powerhouse, I would like to welcome in Hannah Daniker. How are you? Hi, doing so good. That was so funny. I've never had the wakeboard part of that come into the into the professional experience. That was such hey. a funny thing to hear added, but I, I love it. It's, it's part of the past. Well, I saw it on the bio and I had to call it out because that's amazing uh, accomplishment. That's but uh, before we get into your hot take on this subject, I want to give uh, the Spicy Gnome a shout out for sponsoring our summer series that we call Spill the Sauce. That's where mm. we're helping people get hired, get promoted, get noticed in this noisy job market. We are not only here to spice up your favorite dish, but we are here dishing out some great content. And Hannah is here to spill the sauce on the transportation staffing and how you can get into that. Don't forget head over to the spicy gnome.com today. All right. Well, Hannah, let's learn a lot about transportation staffing, how you got into it, what your journey's been, mm. just getting to know you through this whole process. I am just amazed at all of the things that you've been able to accomplish at such a young age. I can say that because I'm a Thank lot you. older, but can you share a little bit about your journey and your role and what is the Better Together group? Yeah, absolutely. So. I am, uh, as of really recently, the managing partner of the Better Together group of companies. So that's exciting. That'll be one of the first podcasts that that'll go out live on uh, for this, That's which is exciting. But we are a group of staffing agencies that my father started about 20 years ago when I was a kid. And he started it with Revolution Staffing, and Revolution Staffing is specifically an agency within transportation. And he started it because he saw my father-in-law and my uncle, who were both truck drivers, and he saw the value of what truck drivers do, which is they deliver anything and everything, including the sauce that sponsors this podcast. Everything gets delivered if you can see it, touch it, or feel it. So that kind of concept really resonated with him. And he started the agency all those years ago. And as a kid, you know, I never wanted to get into it, never thought it could be for me. And then in the midst of the pandemic, I graduated mm -hmm. from school and I was like, wow, it's a time, if any, to go and be in your family business and help how you can and support where you can. And I got invested in it. And then kind of in the midst of COVID and the whole thank a trucker concept, all of the back and forth of what the true value was in transportation turned on this light inside of me. And I was able to then kind of apply this, this passion for what I have had in the past and the the gratitude of what I had experienced because of the industry and combine mm -hmm. it with my new understanding of what transportation actually looked like because I got involved and learned a lot and it was much more interesting than I had anticipated it. And then from there, I was like, now, now I'm the girl who loves to have a pink room and also wants her CDL license. So it's, it's been a funny journey. I never anticipated being in logistics. But that's kind of how I ended up here. Well, congratulations to you on your new title and your new Thanks. partnership with um, your family business. I think it's amazing that your dad started that and it's a much needed thing. Mm -hmm. And during the pandemic, you were right. Transportation was one of the things that we all relied on just to get all of our things across the different states and across the borders just to get, you know, all of the medical supplies that we needed and um, mm -hmm. everything. So it's a very important job. And it's been really hard to find people who want to get involved in that. And that's why I wanted to do this podcast episode just to shed some light on some of the, you know, positive things that there are about a career in transportation. But before mm -hmm. I also get into that, you wrote several books and one, I love the title. So I just want you to touch base on it. It's called Well Shit, Time to this Grow one, Up. Yes. This one and right I here. I want to know more about that. 
<laughs> Absolutely. So that started when the pandemic was in the works and I had moved back to Canada and I was living with my brothers. We had got a split duplex at the time and I was living in a basement apartment in the midst of the pandemic. And Canada was very different than the US was. Canada, we were on a lockdown extraordinaire. And so I was dating someone in the US and traveling back and forth. And I think I spent about three months in isolation through one of the years, just for the 14 day quarantines that were mandatory after crossing the border. But anyways, so <laughs> that was happening and I had all of this free time and I was like, what am I going to do with it? Uh, but I had just experienced um, a vacation with a friend in Florida where we had been running in the rain and having this very wholesome very simple moment. Like it, it was raining. We went outside, we ran, we danced together, but it meant the most to me in the world. I was like, wow, this is um, actually one of my favorite moments in history. And I can't believe how simple. And so I sat down and I just kind of had the urge to write it out because it was so meaningful to me in that moment. And I wanted to be able mm -hmm. to share it with my friend and share it um, with other people or myself in 50 years, should I want to look back and remember. And so I did that and I was like, wow, I, I really enjoyed writing. I really liked writing this process down. And mm -hmm. what a joy it is that I can share this with my friend now and say, this is how much this impacted me and you impacted me and here's why. And I started writing specifically lessons that people in my life had taught me that I could then share with them and say, thank you for, for teaching me. This was valuable. And you may not have even known that this hit me the way that it did. And my original goal was to put all of them into a diary that I could give to my one day kids, but no, it uh, snowballed into something crazy because when I dive in, I like to dive deep. And so now it's, now she's a book that's out there and in the <laughs> public, but that's, that's kind of how the whole thing came together. That's amazing. Well, let's get into the staffing challenges of the transportation industry. What are the biggest staffing challenges that your company's seeing or that you see throughout the industry? Yeah. So in transportation, there's a driver shortage and there has been for a while. Um, anywhere kind of across North America, it is challenging to find really good drivers and to not pay very, very well for them. And if, mm. if you've got great packages and your pay rate is good and you treat your drivers really well and your reputation is really good and your equipment is really good and you're on top of everything, um, if you're handling it well, you can find drivers, don't get me wrong. But mm -hmm. if you're not hitting all of those marks, it can be really challenging to find people to come and work for you. So there's a driver shortage just in general. But one of the things that I focus specifically on is a female shortage within the industry. Mm -hmm. I wish I had statistics of what the the difference is females to males. And I, the difference is insane. There's so many more men in the industry than there are females. And Personally, I, I said at the beginning, I now get to be the girl who loves to have a pink room, pink office and come and sit uh, and still love the transportation industry. But most people don't understand how those two things connect because most people don't right. necessarily understand what logistics is. And so we've come to this place where it's one of the most important industries we have. If we didn't have it, no one would have anything. Nothing would be delivered. Exactly. But some of the most influential and uh, fantastic people in the working environment don't really know the relevance of what it has today. And that, I think, resorts back to lack of communication with children about what mm. that potential looks like when it's not a cookie cutter version of what we expect that child to look into, if that makes sense to you. It does. And actually, while you were talking, I did uh, pull up a few statistics. Don't know how accurate oh, this is because I did not get a chance to, um, you know, vet <laughs> this source. <laughs> yeah. um, so it says here that men constitute approximately 76% of the workforce in transportation and material moving up patients and women represent 24% of the workforce in the sector, with some roles having a higher female representation, such as administrative support and logistics. HR, marketing. Yeah. yeah. So I, I would be, and maybe you can find this answer while, while I continue <laughs> to talk, I'd be interested to know the difference between females and males, specifically in drivers. Mm. Because within logistics, you've got like hiring, you've got marketing, you've got HR, you've got dispatch, you've got a bunch of different things that you can plop 
um, different females into, but specifically with drivers, it's even more substantial than that, I would imagine. But I mean, 24%, like that's, that's not yeah, it's significant. very underrepresented for yeah. sure. Now, well, let's talk about, um, you know, despite the gender differences that we have there, yeah, yeah uh, a significant portion of the workers are aged we'll say like bees to like mid fifties. And then we have, you know, very small handful of young workers that are able to drive that make a very small percentage of the workforce in the driving industry. How do you feel we can bridge that generational in yeah. the transportation industry? Any tips? I would say really, really intentional communication is going to be your best asset here. It's really easy to let these kinds of conversations, what do you want to be when you grow up, like flow in the wind, because it's what everybody asks everybody when yeah. they're kids. Uh, but realistically, right. it has a lot of impact. Kids start to think about what they want to be when they're four. And then when they're 12, they start to make decisions about what class they're going to be going into, which has effect from, sorry, age seven is where those decisions start to solidify. And then 12, they start to make decisions about the high school courses they'll take. And then that affects where they go in university, which affects where they end mm -hmm. up. And so it seems so mild when they're young. It's like, this doesn't really matter. Um, you want to be a princess. Yes, you want to be a princess. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> but what does a princess look like if she wants to be a truck driver? Or what mm -hmm. does she look like if she wants to be a bookkeeper? Or a? it's so easy to have simple conversations, but they are, they're most impressionable when they are young. So we can take the opportunity to influence them for the better when they are young. And, and that's something that I'm super passionate about. But on the flip side of that, I think that because of the way that social media has like escalated, mm -hmm. uh, the blue collar working world has not seemed mm -hmm. as beneficial to people who are Gen Zs and millennials, because what they have witnessed as like this idolization concept from the way yep. that I understand it, at least is a very white collar world. It is right. oh, technology is so cool. So fun. So new, <laughs> I want to sit down with it. I want to be at my computer all day. And this nine to five grind has become super appealing or seems right. super appealing until they start doing it. And then they start doing it and they're like, maybe this isn't everything it's knocked out to be. <laughs> right. But I think I actually have a lot of hope that in the last five, 10 years through social media, specifically like Facebook, then Instagram, now TikTok, people from a general perspective have the ability to produce so much more content. And so people from a consumer's perspective have mm -hmm. the ability to understand so much more about so many additional industries. And so now there are people who are your average day plumber, your average day truck driver, your average day carpenter, and wh whatever you want to fill that box to be that are sharing their information and content. And it's so interesting to others and they're getting earlier access to information right. that can kind of help shape that picture. So there is a gap and it's going to be really hard for a little while because boomers are going to kind of start to, to sway out. But I have mm -hmm. hope that through that transition, um, it'll kind of correct itself, but we will see. Yeah, what do you think? Will. Do you think that in your experience, you were kind of positioned towards the white collar just based on kind of when you grew up or do, did you ever experience yeah. that? That could be really cool that like I would be interested in that blue type collar job. Was that ever an option for you? Just kind of that was never something up? that my parents ever talked about. It was always pushing us to, you know, get your four year degree culturally. Asians like to push their kids into some type of medical field or some type of mm -hmm. professional field. And we never spoke about the potential of other careers. Now, I mm -hmm. do have a friend who is actually pushing her children to not even attend college and find a skill or a trade or something that they can learn from because we're both in the HR and staffing and she can seize the potential of the benefits and the salaries that you can get without having to go to law school or get yeah. your doctorate degree. I mean, yeah. you can make a ton of money. So that's another thing I wanted to talk about was what are some of those perks that might attract some of our younger professionals? Yeah, absolutely. I love that you asked this question. And right before I get to it, I want to mention 72% of Gen Zs are choosing or um, anticipated to not choose to go to university. 
or oh, get wow. a post-secondary degree, which is insane. Like 72% of them are like, no, I think that there's a way better way to do this than that. So it'll be really interesting to see how HR professionals deal with that. But it doesn't surprise me that she's not encouraging her kids to go to school yeah. <laughs> um, because there are so many other ways to get that information. But what are some of the benefits of it? So because it is not as normalized to be in trades or transportation or logistics or whichever uh, field you want to fall into, because it's not as normalized, you have more opportunity. So as a female coming into it, I get to step into this industry and say, hey, this is so cool. This is so great. Let me learn so much. And now I've had the opportunity because it's a small industry, because there's not right. that many people. I've been able to to meet enough people because I stand out in the industry. I've been able to kind of come up and start speaking in the in the industry and become kind of a of a voice of some individuals, which would not have been as applicable if I say went into nursing. Um, I wouldn't mm -hmm. have stood out in nursing the same way right. that I do in logistics. And so that was really helpful to me and can be really helpful to anyone who really wants to come into an industry and shake it up a little bit. But outside of that, outside of standing out, uh, you get to you get to see the world. You get to travel. Yeah. You get to drive, which is really cool. Or um, you get to stay in your same local town <laughs> and you can do local deliveries every day and sleep in your bed every night. Or you can pick up random shifts here and there and help cover off long weekends and mm. pick up a little bit of money here and there. Transportation can be really kind of flexible with your options, but then it's a really good community. Like drivers love other drivers. They have such a care for other drivers. It's a really tight, tight knit community and lots of care and respect for people who are within the industry. Like mm -hmm. when when a dispatcher talks to a driver, there is a very good inherent respect of just, I see what you're doing and I see that it's hard. And I'm not saying that happens everywhere. There are bad apples in every industry, but right. for the most part, it's it's really impressive. I mean, you walk into, I'm going to be speaking at a uh, event here in a couple of weeks. It's the Bridging Barriers Conference. It'll be in Toronto. It's all mm -hmm. about bringing more females into the transportation industry. And man, mm -hmm. I walk in that room and I'm like, it just feels <laughs> like love. I'm like, I don't right. even know 50% of you. I might not even know 70% of you, but like the, I want to meet you. I want to talk to you. I want to learn from you. The care and just desire to build community is unlike something I've seen elsewhere. That's awesome. Well, mm -hmm. so I know pay is going to vary um, depending on location, the size of company, all of that. Every now and then you are behind a truck and you see like they are offering sign on bonuses and they're just trying to do whatever they can to mm -hmm. get someone to get behind the wheel. Mm -hmm. On an average, what are you seeing as like starting pays um, for truck drivers um, with specific licenses and all of that, just to give listeners an idea of the potential money you can expect to start? Yeah, absolutely. So I will speak, I'm going to speak in Canadian dollars, uh, which is going to be a little harder, but we do a lot of our orders in Canada right now. So I want to, I want to speak to what I specifically have just seen, but there there's different types of licenses. So when it comes to a G driver, which is what you and I probably have, I imagine this is what you have. It's, you can drive a commercial van, you can drive a commercial <laughs> truck that is um, still small enough, but that can start anywhere at... $18 Canadian, which would be maybe $21 American, uh, mm -hmm. which would be low. And that would be for maybe not touching the freight. You don't have to move anything. You just stop and somebody picks it mm. up and um, you kind of keep rolling on. When you start to add on stuff, like you have to move the freight, you, you got to add a dollar. Or when you um, change licenses, you got to add money. So then you step up to something okay. like a DZ license. A DZ license is, gosh, 16 wheels. I should know that very specifically, <laughs> but I think it's 16 wheels. Anyways, um, that is going to be $22 as a minimum, I would imagine is kind of where you want to start. And then $25 okay. would be average. Um, and $27 would be good. 
and then you go up to an AZ license, which is the biggest trucks that you see on right. the on the road. And that could be anywhere kind of like 28, 29 to start. And then from there, you just continue to excel. So if you add additional uh, licensing, if you add additional uh, hazardous material, whatever that would look like, you just continue to add more. Awesome. Well, I saw a guy on uh, TikTok around the pandemic times about his journey, and he had a few viral videos, but he was also talking about how he's been doing it since he got out of high school, and he makes like well into the six figures now with the routes mm -hmm. that he has. Um, so it can be very lucrative, and I wish I can find who that guy is because I would love to invite him to come uh, you know, maybe connect the two of you and like have a great podcast or even write a book that about would, it. <laughs> that would be an interesting conversation <laughs> for sure. Absolutely. But yeah. You can, you can make a lot of money doing it. If you're moving really dangerous goods and you've got a lot of experience and you're taking jobs that most people don't want, you can easily make ridiculous money as a truck driver. Um, but it really does come back to, to what you're doing and how long you've been doing it, just like any other industry. Well, um, if people are interested in getting into a career in truck driving, um, besides going directly to an employer, can they reach out to you and um, maybe Absolutely. see what kind of jobs you guys have? Absolutely. I would love to talk with them. They can find us online at revolutionstaffing.ca or .com and then uh, the offset of that, of where you can find me, I'll say it now so I don't forget it later, is x2z.org, uh, which is um, got all of the links to everything. So it's a one-stop shop for anything and everything. Okay, but, perfect. We'll put that in yeah. the show notes as well. And then links to find your books. You do have a new book that uh, you just released called Accidental mm -hmm. Leadership. Um, mm -hmm. That's one of the four that you have. Want to share a little bit about that and then how people can find you. You can find me on LinkedIn, Hannah Daniker, and that's my favorite spot to connect with people. But you can find all of my stuff, all of the books, all of the links, all of, all of the things that can help you in any way, shape, and form, so all of the relevant things to you, you can find x2z.org. Um, and don't say it too fast or you'll make yourself giggle. But yeah, I actually don't remember what the first part of that question was. No. Part of it was, where can we find you? Oh, the book. My gosh. Sorry. Your books. Your books. Your main the books. The Accidental Leadership Book. <laughs> So yeah, my bad. The <laughs> accidental leadership book. So that, yeah, that stemmed from watching a lot of people that I care about and experiencing some of it myself, but coming into a leadership role when you weren't necessarily anticipating it. So lots of people start as top performers mm -hmm. and they are like, I love to excel and do really well. But then because they do really well and they excel, people around them are like, who I want to learn from that. I want to talk to that. I want to figure that out. You start to put yourself in this leadership position when you were not not necessarily anticipating it, which oftentimes brings different people asking you different questions that you were not necessarily ready for. And so this is a short book. It's 30 days and designed to be consumed in five minute pieces. It's a five minute video and then a question page um, that's a book that kind of walks through what the video talks about and then helps you go through an exercise relevant to it. So it takes five minutes every day. Uh, it's like a crash course on accidental leadership. And then you can go back to it and just keep it at your desk for that situation when you're like, that's a good question. Let me let me get back to you on that. Perfect. But yeah, that's, that's then, what it's divine for. I also just want to give a shout out because you also have a podcast, uh, well, a couple of podcasts, but the one with your dad um, mm -hmm. X to Z, it's where you are talking with your dad um, about that. So I want to make sure people go check that out. You have another podcast called Work Ish. So that's mm -hmm. a, a series. You're up to the second series, I believe. Um, you're just a busy lady. And, you know, I love what you're doing for women, especially in the transportation uh, industry, because it's something that we don't really hear a lot about. And you're just you know, bringing it to light. And I'm just so proud of like all of the accomplishments and just the fact that I get to know you and that you're here um, really fills my cup. <laughs> so I well, appreciate that. Thank um, you. Well, these, these conversations always fill my cup too. And I think emotion <laughs> stays in motion. So, you know, exactly. just keep. Just yeah. Well, I hoped we can get you back because I want to talk about um, 
you know, your work with like the Gen Z, we're going to talk about like Gen Alpha, which is like the next thing people oh aren't gosh. even thinking about um, yeah. and all of the different things. And by then you'll probably have another book out. Who knows? Probably. You never know. <laughs> but I appreciate you sharing your insights and your experience with us today. And I hope our listeners got a lot out of it. If you guys enjoyed this episode, don't forget, subscribe to the Just Get Hired podcast wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Go add X to Z, find Workish as well. And then come on back here because Wednesday I'm going to have another guest. We're going to spill the sauce. The summer is almost over and so is the series. So I want you guys to go check it out. Definitely go find Hannah's books um, and you can learn more about her on LinkedIn, the Better Together group, Revolution Staffing. We'll have all of this in the show notes so you don't miss it. But I appreciate you, Hannah, for being a part of the Just Get Hired podcast. And thank you guys for tuning in. Thanks for having me.